Yes, it's the fourth in the Vision series from Seven Artisans. This is the 12 mil. Well, this is the 12 mil T 2.9 for Fujifilm. The sun has finally peaked out again, so I'm off out once more to test this thing. It's taken longer than usual, but that's not a bad thing. It's good to really let the thoughts marinate and get some proper use out of this gear, as we always try to do on the channel. Anyway, we will be looking at it up close. Those very random test samples will be sprinkled more or less throughout the video. We'll have a little chat about it and then it will be over to you in the comments below. So yeah, let's crack on. Right, this should be basically business as usual. This vision set seems to be very well thought out. So yep, it's exactly the same as before. Now, <laughs> that could have been shrunk down maybe, but it's all quality. It That was clearly designed for a different lens or maybe for with the hood on. Anyway, get that out of the way. That's not a big deal. Oh, it feels like the real deal. Look at that. That is actually very cool. It's like they've squashed the other ones <laughs> to make this one. Look, that is actually, as you can imagine, a chunky little thing. 533 grams with caps. I've measured it myself previously. Yeah. So we've got nice metal, of course. This looks almost exactly the same sort of build quality as the others that we looked at as you'd expect from this set 18 mil full frame equivalent 180 degree angle of view nine diaphragm blades 12 elements in 10 groups of course we've got these beautiful rings there 270 degree focus throw standard gear mod setup now obviously they look a bit thinner but they fit perfectly on the gear setup we've got a close focusing distance of 14 centimeters filter size 82 mil and i'll be using my new funky velium filters with this and yeah 2.9 to T16, clearly turning the wrong. <laughs> I love it. There you go. T2.9 to T16. Very nice. Now we do have meter and feet markings on the focus, you know, to cater for both of you, your meter fans and your feet fans. But yeah, basically. This fits in very well, perfectly with the rest of the series. Even though it's a bit more of a squat sort of mini beast. This should be a lot of fun. Those clips were taken at Serhal Mill, which was a place that Tolkien would go as a child, and it was the place and the surrounding area that inspired his famous books. Anyway, we don't usually waffle about anything other than the thing in question, so back to it. After some thorough use and abuse, the lens stands up to the others in the series as far as build and handling performance goes. It's pretty easy to handle on the go, and the rings move smoothly and pretty accurately.
quick focus breathing check, keep an eye on the corners as we go through the range. Should be on the eyes now of creepy. I don't think it's that creepy. But the focus shift is definitely creeping. How cheesy is that? On the eyes, going to the other extreme now. Remember, final pass, keep an eye on this area, this area maybe. Right, let's go through it and you can see clearly shift. Does it bother you? Center sharpness is close to excellence and corner sharpness, pretty good wide open. Now color rendering is in line with the rest of the series and works very well with Fujifilm sensors. Contrast is also very good. There's plenty of detail in the shadows and the lens works, let's say quite well in low light scenes or grim scenes as I've found the last couple of months I've been testing this thing. You know, the UK really is a nightmare this time of year, as you can see in some of these clips. Still, it gave me a chance to see how the lens would fare in some more moody situations. And I think this lens could give a very interesting view and character for some indoor style shots. Next up, a quick test where the only thing we change between frames is the T-stop. See if you can spot any issues. As you saw, vignetting improves once you start to stop down. Out and about, I found no issues with flaring, ghosting, or chromatic aberrations. Finally, bokeh. It's not the first thing you think about with such a wide angle lens, but it is relatively pleasant when you get it. There's definitely nothing too distracting going on. Anyway, now for a final set of test clips, this time at a familiar location to you, the Library of Birmingham, which I highly recommend if you ever visit. Now then, I love the focal length, the build and the handling, and for the most part, the image quality. It doesn't feel quite as good as the others in the series, but it's still a good matchup. You might find it a bit of a squeeze to fit it into your rig compared to the others in the series, but overall, a very good experience. So at what, around £345, is it worth it? I'd say so.